experiment time. Today we're going to see what difference a cold bake versus a warm bake makes for a high hydration loaf. Does it make any difference? Hi, I'm Sune and I'm a food geek. I've heard many people say that they bake a sourdough bread starting in a cold oven. But the method I use is to bake in a scorching hot oven. Baking while the oven is heating is a lot more eco-friendly, so if the results are the same, there's a good reason to stop heating for a long time without anything in the oven. So today's experiment sets out to see what difference preheating makes when you bake a high hydration loaf. The first loaf will be baked in a cold oven and a cold Dutch oven. The second loaf will be baked in a warm oven, but using a cold Dutch oven. And the third loaf will be baked in a warm oven using a warm Dutch oven. That's the control because that's the method I normally use. We'll see what difference it makes for the oven spring, the crust and the crumb of the bread. If you're new to this channel, I bake a lot of sourdough bread and I make delicious food from all over the world. I'm on a quest to get the most out of every ingredient and my goal is to teach you how to do that in simple and understandable steps. So join me by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any future videos. The hydration of the dough is 85%, which means that fast heating of the dough is of high importance for the oven spring. Or, that's at least my theory. <laughs> Were we to make a bread with 70% hydration, the dough should be standing up much more by itself. My hypothesis is that the colder the bake is, the harder it will be to get good oven spring. But I guess we'll let the oven rule. The formula of the bread is linked below in the description if you want the specifics. I'm documenting the process of making the dough so that you can see everything that goes on before it's put into the oven and compare it to your own process. Those were the words. This is the experiment. Since I'm baking all three breads with the same dough, I'm going to be working on the dough in one piece all the way until I divide the dough. First, I built a lavan. Then I mix everything for the auto lease, including the salt. And I leave it until the Levan has peaked. Once the lavan is peaked, I mix the lavan into the dough. Then I leave the dough to rest for 30 minutes. Then I do the first set of stretch and folds. a second set of stretch and folds. A third set of stretch and folds. And a window pane test to check the glue. It's looking good. Then I add the dough to a bulking container and let it grow with about 50%. Here's how it looked after the fermentation was done. Then I divided the dough into three equally sized pieces and then shaped them each into a bowl. Then they rest on the counter for about 20 minutes. Then I did the final shape and put them into bannetons.
After they're all done, I put them in the fridge until the next day, around 24 hours. Then it was time to bake. I grabbed the first dough out of the fridge. Dusted it. Scored it. Placed it inside a cold Dutch oven. Then I set the oven to heat to 260 degrees Celsius, that's 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And I set the timer to 40 minutes. My oven heats very quickly. If you have a slower oven, you might need more time. After the 40 minutes were up, I uncovered the loaf, turned the heat down to 230 degrees Celsius and baked for about 25 minutes more. And that's how it looked out of the oven. Then it was time for the second loaf. I uh, reheated the oven to 260 degrees Celsius. Put that directly into the cold Dutch oven and scored it. And then I placed the Dutch oven into the warm oven. I baked for 20 minutes. Then I uncovered the bread and I turned the heat down to 230 degrees Celsius and baked for 25 minutes more. And that's how that looked. Then it was time for the final loaf. I reheated the oven to 260 degrees Celsius. I scored it. And placed it into the hot Dutch oven. Baked for 20 minutes. Uncovered and turned the heat down to 230 degrees Celsius and baked for 25 minutes more. And here it is out of the oven. That's looking nice. Let's compare all three. First, we have the entirely cold big one. There's a very nice crust, pretty flat, but a very nice lacy crumb. Then we have the warm oven, but cold touch oven version. Again, very nice crust. Also pretty flat, but it has a nice crumb. A bit more regular, but I think that's probably handling. And then the final hot baked one, great crust. Obviously there's oven spring in the score. 
great height and a really nice crumb. All right, so that seems pretty conclusive to me. The harder you bake, the better the chance of good oven spring. To those saying that the last loaf proved longer, well, that would have given the opposite result in case it was overproofed. Also, my fridge is set to two degrees Celsius, about 35.5 degrees Fahrenheit, which means that the proofing stops when the dough dips below 4C39F. Again, had I used a lower hydration loaf, the result would not have been looking as significant, since the bread could have probably kept its shape during the bake. You would have probably been able to tell the difference in how the scores had opened though. Consider buying a t-shirt to support the channel. Follow the link in the card above. I hope you learned something today. See you next time. Cool.